Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the John DeVito Show. It is Friday. Who's excited about that? I'm excited. Who's excited? You excited? I'm excited. Friday, baby. That deserves applause. It deserves applause. We made it. We made it through another week. So we're going to be talking about a variety of different things today. We're going to be keeping the show light. We're going to be having some fun. I've got some ideas of fun things to talk about today. We're going to talk a little bit about, you know, do you have an August bucket list? Are you looking forward to fall? We're going to talk about some of your favorite action heroes and movies. And then talk about going after your dreams and not being afraid. So stay tuned right here and enjoy the John DeVito Show. We'll be getting going in a minute or two. So happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Ooh, harp noise. I like that. Welcome to the John DeVito Show, everyone. It is Friday, and it's already August 6th. Can you believe it's August 6th? I can't believe it's August 6th. It seems like the month of July just disappeared on us. It it flew by, and up here where I am in New England, we received you know a lot of rain during the month of July. Uh, Shabazz, welcome to the show. I'm not going to take calls yet. I'll take them a little bit later. So if you want to call in, hang out, and we'll take your phone call in a little bit. So, but anyway, um, yeah, I mean, up here, I can't believe we're into August. And I guess if you're in a place in this country where you live in a warm climate, then you know it being August doesn't make that much of a difference to you. But here, you know, we live in this cold climate. We live in New England, and we really enjoy our May, June. July, August, and even September. But then after that, we start looking towards October, which is generally a nice month, but it does get cold in October. So, you know, then we start looking at November. We look at uh, December, January, where we get a whole bunch of snow, a whole bunch of cold weather, a whole bunch of just nastiness that we could all do without here in New England. So anyway, that's kind of what we're dealing with. But, you know, we still have August. We still have September. And then we're getting back into the snow. We're getting back into the cold. But, you know, the new me, I've tried to embrace the cold. I've tried to embrace the snow. I've tried to get out there and just at least enjoy some of that winter time while I'm living here, because at some point I'm probably going to be a person that retires to Florida where I'm not living in a cold climate. So, but uh, for the time being, you know, we've got some time here over the next few months to enjoy the nice weather. And my family and I, we were talking about creating like an August bucket list. So we'll get into that in a minute and talk about whether or not you guys have August bucket lists and, you know, what do you want to do? What do you want to check off before the end of summer? Because we're getting there. You know, we're getting there. It's it's almost time for the kids to get back to school. It's almost time, you know, to really put those vacation plans behind us. And who's gonna? who knows what's going to happen with COVID? And uh, we could have a lot of cancellations of vacations again because mask ma- mandates are being reinstituted. And I hope to God places don't shut down again. But if they do, they do. There's not much we can do about it. So anyway, I uh, just wanted to make you all aware I am going to be doing some podcasts also coming up, uh, kind of specialty podcasts where I'm going to be highlighting different serial killers. Yes, for those of you that tune into my show, you know that I am into serial killers. I am into horror movies. I am a huge horror movie fan. That's why it was such a thrill for my son and I to be cast in the new series of Dexter from Showtime. That was amazing being on set. We got to, you know, I was literally five feet away from Michael C. Hall, who plays Dexter, and it was just awesome to be there. But that's one thing that, uh, again, is going to, you know, that I'm going to start doing a little bit of. I'm going to have these podcasts on people like Jack the Ripper, you know, H.H. H. Holmes, John Wayne Gacy, Jeffrey Dahmer, maybe even people like Lizzie Borden. And I mean, I don't know if you could say she was really a serial killer, but she was definitely infamous. So I'm going to start doing some podcasts. They're probably only going to be 30 to 40 minutes long. And a lot of times when I do these type of podcasts, they end up, you know, I end up recording them and I don't broadcast live. But I'm going to try uh, doing these live coming up over the next few weeks to kind of see um you know, what's, uh, what's happening and, uh, to see if people enjoy actually coming into those shows. Now, you know, a couple of news stories that I saw and, uh, 
it kind of got me by surprise a little bit. I don't know if people have seen these news stories. I'm actually looking over at another page right now. Did you see like the nine, the nine 11 families, like the families of the people that passed away in the September 11th bombings are basically telling president Biden not to come to their memorial events. I mean, that is to me, that's huge. You know, and again, I'm not going to get into bashing Biden on this, but for 9-11 families to tell the president of the United States not to come to the memorial event. I mean, to me, that's kind of crazy that uh, they're telling him that. And that just shows again, what a disconnect we have in this country between the left and the right. So that's kind of scary stuff that they're actually coming out and telling president Biden, we don't want you here. Stay out, stay out. And, you know, other headline news stories also, you see what's happening to Governor Cuomo in New York. And again, you know, this guy, you know, whether you're Democrat, whether you're Republican, I mean, this guy has a history of assaulting people and just doing nasty things to women and other people. It's just time for this guy to step down. I mean, he needs to go. He needs to get out of New York. He needs to free the people of New York so they can move in a new direction. And they're actually talking about potentially impeaching him from office, which is just incredible. So, you know, it's just cra crazy situations all throughout the news. But I'm going to try to, for the most part, just ignore news stories today and not talk too much about you know things regarding the news and politics and that type of thing because i don't like to do those shows every day i like to do other shows that uh, get people's attention and they're fun so some of the things that i'm going to talk about today is we're going to talk about things you know like like i mentioned a little bit earlier we're going to talk about you know do you have a bucket list for the month of august because here we are we're already in august it's almost time for the kids to go back to school if you have kids and for me it's kind of crazy where you know i do have kids and my oldest son is going to be going to college hey ajf welcome to the show mr a welcome to the show and to give you guys a rundown i just got going we're going to be talking today about whether or not you have a bucket list for the month of August. Because face it, you know, summer is, we're here, we're in summer. Summer is moving forward. We're through July, we're into August. And for the people like Doss and I who live in this cold Northeastern climate, we have to suck up all this warm weather that we can. So do you have an August bucket list? What are some of the things that you want to do during the month of August that, you know, you want to get done before it gets cold? Because again, you know, this winter, I'm going to try to embrace skiing again. I skied a couple times last year. I bought some new skis last year. I'm trying to like the winter, even though I don't love the cold. But um, I want to know, what, what are your plans for August? What are you going to do? Do you have any vacations planned? Where are you going to go? You know, we'd like to get one more camping trip in, maybe to Maine again, up to Old Orchard Beach. We really enjoyed being up there. And look at that. As I say, Maine, Snow Pro checks in. Snow Pro, I was, I was just talking about, you know, do any of us have – uh, bucket lists for the month of August that we want to get in before summer's over. I see Mr. A saying long weekend at Lake Cumberland on a houseboat. That sounds awesome. No, I've never been on a houseboat. That must be amazing to actually experience that. Go oh, wait. I see crazy cane. You know what that means? Let me find the right sound. Hold on. Okay. I get to scroll through all my pages. Oh. Welcome crazy cane. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So Snow Pro, you're saying a long motorcycle trip. Now, what type of bike do you have? Do you have a Harley or what do you have for a bike? Oh, I love that laugh. I love that laugh. So anyway, so you have a Harley. So you're probably heading to Miami sometime this month. You know, it's funny you said that. I was just talking about last night that I would like to go to Miami. I've been to Florida a million times, and I've only been to Miami once, and I really didn't get to enjoy the city when I was there. One of my buddies, this was when I was young, and I was uh, just you know getting married. Uh, right before I got married and one of my buddies invited me down. He's a sportscaster and we went down for the NCAA tournament and I stayed in Miami and we had a good time. It was a beautiful city, but I'd like to go down now and experience some of Miami and just check it out. So everybody coming in, thank you so much. Poetic Doss, Mike from Tampa Bay, Crazy Kane, Mr. A, everybody that's coming in. Thank you so much for joining. Tuttles, welcome to the show. Good to see you here again. Eric, welcome in. This was kind of an impromptu show today. So since I get a lot of people coming in now, let me just kind of go over some of the things I want to talk about today. All right. And we're going to have some fun today. It's not going to be political today. I want to stay away from that stuff today. So number one, I'm eventually going to get to talking about not being afraid and not being afraid of failing in your life, because that is such an important thing that we all have to grasp. And we're going to get to that in a second, because, you know, life is hard. And in life, we all fail over and over again. I know I have so many times and people become afraid to fail. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're talking right now, right now about 
our summer bucket list. What type of things do we want to do before summer ends? I see uh, Cummings mentioned he wants to go to the Keys. I've never been, been to the Keys. That's something I would like to do as well. And, I mean, the Florida Keys looks beautiful. Poetic, you're right. Failure is learning. You're absolutely correct. Without failure, you can't succeed. So that's something we'll talk about in a little bit. But if you could right now, tell me what your, what your bucket list ideas for are, are for August. I can't believe we're at August 6th already. And we do have some nice weather coming up here in the Massachusetts area over the next couple of days. It's going to be in the 80s both days. But we really had a very wet, rainy July. So, oh, the beach. We were at the beach last weekend. We went camping at Old Orchard Beach in Maine. And it was a beautiful beach. We got like four beach days in a row just chilling out on the sand. And if you haven't been to Old Orchard Beach, Maine, or you haven't seen what Old Orchard Beach is like. Google Old Orchard Beach in Maine. And it's one of those old school beaches where it's kind of become yuppified over the last 10 years where the, you know, the shops are kind of trendy now and things like that. But the beach is beautiful. They have a huge boardwalk, but then they also have a giant amusement park right on the water. It's so cool. So we bought my kids, you know, wristbands. (laughs) Excuse me, I'm coughing. (laughs) <laughs> excuse me i don't have a cough button so someone give me the heimlich i need help help me but no anyway so maine's beautiful the beach is incredible my kids had like little wristbands and they were going on rides you know while we were at the beach and all that stuff so it was just beautiful but maine poetic if you've never been you've got to get that on your life bucket list maine is one of the most beautiful states in the country you have beautiful mountains beautiful lakes up in the wilderness you've got you know the ocean with tons of beach It is just the best state. It's almost like a little mini Alaska. So if you can't afford the trip to Alaska, take a trip to Maine and just experience everything Maine has to offer. It's really just an amazing state. I mean, I grew up in New Hampshire, and but Maine is my favorite. So I see Mr. A. Sending my kids back to school was the top thing on my list, but then making them wear masks. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Are they going to online school now? And I don't want to get political today, but I, I will mention the mask thing. My kids are really upset because I've got, you know, my oldest son, as I mentioned briefly in the old man show, my oldest son's going to college. He has autism. He's going to a community college near our house, and he's going to be staying in a dorm that was created by the therapeutic school for kids on the autism spectrum that they created. So they're going to bring him to school. They're going to help him with homework. It's really a cool place. But I know that he and then my youngest two are both very upset about the new mask mandates again. My daughter, Caitlin, as a lot of you know, she does online school. She does it through Tech Academy, and she's been doing that all through high school, so she doesn't have to go into school. But my youngest two are not happy about the mask mandate, so I get that completely. And, you know, it's just crazy times we're living in. I'm hoping at some point we get past all this pandemic stuff, but I know that we're all tired of talking about it, all tired of thinking about it. But I did experience it yesterday a little bit. You know, up here in New England, the states are pretty small. So I left my house yesterday and drove down to meet a customer for lunch in Connecticut. It was only about an hour drive away, but it's, you know, two different states. So I drove into Connecticut. I walked into the restaurant to meet this customer who I've been friends with for years, and everybody in the restaurant had masks on. I was like, "Uh uh-oh, I didn't have a mask. I had no, no masks in my car. I took like three steps into this small restaurant. The waitresses, the customers, everybody had them on. So I took like three steps in. Everyone looked at me with no mask on. And I looked at the waitress and I said, oh, is there like a mask thing down here in Connecticut? And she's like, yeah, they just reinstituted that. I'm like, I'm from Massachusetts. I didn't know. I apologize. And luckily, uh, they were okay with it. So I didn't have a mask and they were cool. Crazy Kane, you leaving me already? Oh, man. All right. Hopefully, we'll see you come back into the show while you're here. So check back in. So listen, now, in addition to the summer bucket list, we're talking about some of the things you might, might want to do before summer's over. Is there anybody in here that's excited for fall? Now, I would imagine Mike from Tampa Bay. I know that in Florida, it gets really hot over the summer, and people look forward to you know fall and winter and spring because the temperatures are cooler. You don't get as many thunderstorms. I know, yeah, so you're not. I know up here, there are a lot of people that love fall up here. And you know I like it. The month of September is probably the nicest month of the year here in New England. It's beautiful the whole month. But then October, it gets cold. November, it gets really cold. And then we're in the shit until basically May as far as snow and everything like that. But I, I will say, one of the things I like about the fall are, is going to Dunkin' Donuts. We have Dunkin' Donuts up here. I'm not sure if you have those everywhere in the country. I mean, if you don't, similar to like a Starbucks. But in New England, Dunkin' Donuts just rules. We have them like literally every mile in every city. You can't 
drive through a town without seeing like three Dunkin' Donuts everywhere. So I like my pumpkin spice coffee. That's something I look forward to in the fall. I'm a big pumpkin spice coffee type of guy. I enjoy that. I love it. And, uh, you know, that's something I really look forward to in the fall. One of, one of the few things. I do like Halloween also. Oh, I got to tell you this story. This is crazy. I saw this on the news this morning. I see Tuttle saying he loves fall. In my area, July and August are extremely humid. Uh, Alabama, you don't have much of a fall. It looks like snow pro. Oh, you're going to a wedding in Connecticut next month. Nice. I imagine it's going to be a mask mandate. But this is something I saw in the news this morning. I wasn't going to talk about this, but it's just I just remember this, and this is kind of crazy. Now, in in Salem, Massachusetts, you know, I love Halloween. And Salem, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Salem, Massachusetts, the witch trials. They hung witches back in the day in like the 1600s and literally killed women saying they were witches. So they have a huge Halloween celebration that they kind of canceled last year and didn't really have it. But they have a big parade in Salem, Massachusetts, where it's like you've got like all these ghouls and all these witches and all these crazy people in this parade. And you've got people that travel all over the country to come to Salem, Massachusetts. Massachusetts for their haunted happenings, as they call it. So do you hate Halloween? See, I like Halloween. I'm kind of a Halloween fan. I like Halloween. I don't like the cold weather, but I do like Halloween itself. But what they're doing this year is they have a big parade in Salem, Massachusetts. And this is what they were talking about on the news uh, this morning. They are going to have a stay in place parade. I've never heard of that before. So I'm watching the news. I'm like, what's a stay in place parade? So apparently they're going to have the whole parade set up but it's not going to move. It's going to stay in place. And they're going to allow people to walk around and look at the parade. Yeah, I've been through drive through parades. I've done that. But this is a stay-in-place parade where the parade is all set up outside and people can walk around and look at the parade, but the parade is not going to, like, drive by you in a street. I, I don't even know what why they're doing that. I don't know what the purpose is or what the advantage is of that. Now, if this is, like, a COVID precaution – How does that help if you just don't move the parade and the people walk? Wouldn't it be the same thing as the parade, you know, moving and the people just standing and watching? So I've been thinking about that all day. And I think I need more clarification as to what that's about. Because honestly, it makes like no sense to me. I don't get it. I don't get why they would have the parade stand still and just allow people to walk around the parade. So I don't know. So listen, hey, if you're new in here, uh, give me a follow if you don't mind. And please share my live. I would greatly appreciate that. And if anybody wants to call in, you know, there's kind of an open forum today. So let's let people call in. Is Eric. He hit it right away, man. He is quick with that with that finger on that button. So we got Eric coming in. Hey, one other thing. Now that we got Eric in, I want to throw this out there, too. I saw that Mike from Tampa Bay in the Old Man Show was talking about Chuck Norris. And this was not on my paper. I wasn't planning on doing this. But it started getting me thinking about who are my favorite people that did karate and action movies. And then that expanded to my favorite action stars. So I had like a list. I wrote down a quick list before the show of my favorite action stars that did karate. Number one, my favorite action stars overall in movies. And then I tried to start thinking about some of my favorite female action stars. And sadly, I'm drawing a blank. I know I have some, but I just couldn't think of them. So let me run down my list of favorite action stars also. So we're talking about, you know, August bucket list. We're talking about Halloween. We're talking about what type of things do you like about the fall? For me, it's pumpkin spice coffee. And then I've got my list of action stars that I kind of jotted down after hearing Mike from Tampa Bay talk about Chuck Norris. So probably my favorite karate oriented action stars are Chuck Norris, obviously, Steven Seagal, I love Seagal back in the day. Jackie Chan, who was amazing in his movies. And then Jean-Claude Van Damme was another one that I really love. Now, as far as my overall action stars, I've got obviously Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Clint Eastwood, The Rock. And, you know, the one that that I don't love, but I have to put him on the list is Bruce Willis. I've never been a big Die Hard fan. I did like him in Pulp Fiction. But as far as, you know, Die Hard franchise, I just never really got that. Now, as far as ladies go, I couldn't think of anybody. I literally had like Angelina Jolie. I was thinking her as like Laura Croft in the Tomb Raider series. But aside from that, I couldn't think of any other good female. Katie, dude, Katie Sackhoff. Do you know I met her? Uh, Cummings and Culture. I sat and had lunch with Katie Sackhoff every day for a week. I was in, as you know, I've been in a few movies. You know, here here go the, the, uh, the, the name dropping. 
But I was in a, a movie about a school shooting. It was called Deadly Obsession. And I was a police officer. So I was literally in the movie with Katie Sackoff and also Bart Johnson, who was the father in high school and actually the, the coach, Coach Bolton in high school musical. So literally, I hung out with Katie Sackoff for a whole week. I had lunch with her, with Bart Johnson, and then uh, Blake Lively's sister. What the hell was her first name? I can't think of it now. But anyway, so yeah, Katie Sackoff was pretty attractive in person, pretty funny, but also kind of very on edge, very nervous actor, but she was really good and she was super nice. So I sat with her every day and at the time I didn't really know who she was, but I know she was in the whole, in the old Battlestar Galactica series. And then she was also in, which isn't she in Longmire? I think on one of those uh, different things. So <laughs> let's see. So Mike from Tampa Bay, Chuck no- Norris knows Victoria's secret. Okay. That one kind of, <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> so Eric, maybe you can explain to me what's, what's the Chuck Norris joke that was going on on the old man show. I think there are plenty of them going on. Um, and then we had ice cream jokes and, and plenty of others. Now, did you guys like my joke? Did you see the one I put in the chat? My 12 year old son told me this joke and it's just the stupidest joke. But when you think about it, it's really funny. We were camping last summer and my 12 year old son looks at me and goes, Hey dad. I'm like, yeah. He goes, why don't you ever see elephants hiding in trees? And I look uh, at him and I'm like, and, and, I remember and that one. That, there are so many different things that come to mind. So why don't you ever see elephants hiding in trees? The answer is because they're really good at it. <laughs> so right. the, the thoughts that go through your head are things well, like, Woody Bush. Hey, they'll, they'll destroy well, the Victor, tree, Victor, whatever. Yeah. Hey, so everybody coming in. Woody Bush, welcome ah. to the show. Victor, welcome to the show. And uh, thank you. Here too. So Eric, how about you now? You know, we're into August. We're talking about bucket lists. Do, uh, do you have any things that you want to get done before summer? Do you have any things that you like about fall? Like what type of things do well, you think? Um, hopefully me, I'm, I might see about me and my dad trying to go visit my step grandmother, hopefully so, sometime later in the month, because I know I wouldn't be able to do it this weekend because Sunday I've got a, my niece's birthday party to go to. Nice. Uh, um, Spanky is the other half of the Beans of Weenie show, his co-host Scooter. Yeah, hopefully you might see him. I've heard very, very good things about that show. I've been kind of missing in action a little bit over the summer like I generally do because I get really busy with family stuff. But I've heard really good things about the Spanky with Beans and Weenie show. So I get to get in there and check that show out. I'm sure all of you guys have been in and heard the show. But, Eric, tell me a little bit about the Spanky with Beans and Weenie show. And if you want to call in and we'll talk about I mean, the show, we'd love to have you. I mean, it, it's a great comedy show on here. You know, and I've even suggested that they need to do a collaboration with Chuck and Billy. Oh my God! Those are oh, that 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 oh that house that, oh, that, that they would really be bringing down the house. I can tell. <laughs> that man, that Chuck, Chuck and Billy show. I haven't been in that show for a long time either. But they just go off the hook and they're crazy. I love. Them. <laughs> I, 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 we we love unapologetically unfiltered comedy around here. <laughs> hey, so listen, I, I ran off my list. Everybody that's out there, Cummings, you're on here too. Give me some more action heroes. I mean, I, I ran off my list of favorite action heroes inspired by Mike from Tampa Bay. So to give you my list again, I've got Chuck Norris, Seagal, Jackie Chan, Van Damme, obviously, and those are my karate-oriented people. Stallone, Eastwood, Arnold, of course, The Rock, Bruce Willis, maybe John Cena. Yeah. Maybe John Cena. He's all right. Uh, well, I, I love the, 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 I love the karate movie. kid with Ralph Macchio. Yeah, you know, have you seen the, uh, the new series, <laughs> the Karate Kid uh-uh. series? It's so good. <sighs> How did you leave ahead, off? Jeremy. How did you leave off Bruce Lee? Oh, you know, what, you know Okay, here you go. Now, how about this? I have never seen a Bruce Lee movie. I have never seen one. Have you seen Bruce? I've never watched a Bruce yeah, Lee movie. I've watched Bruce Lee movies. I've never watched one. I've never seen a Bruce Lee movie, which is amazing. So I've got to get off my ass and watch one of his movies. I've never seen one. You and know I the tragedy movie. about his son too, don't you? Oh yes. Oh yeah. That was it. Was that Brandon Lee? Yeah. yeah, like from The Crow, I remember that. Yeah, what happened to his son? What actually happened? They had a prop gun, and they were supposed to put caps in it, but somebody actually – it was a real gun. Like, like they most of the time, they use real guns in movies. They just put oh, caps yeah. in them. And oh. uh, they uh, somebody actually put a put a uh, actual bullet inside the gun, and when they shot him uh, in the movie, they actually shot him. Holy crap. I mean, that's uh-huh. a really murder. I mean, now I can speak about this a little bit because I've been in six films – actually seven now with being in Dexter a couple of weeks ago, but I've been a police officer four times 
and for me, they give you a gun, you have your holster. It was funny. One movie I was in, the one with Katie Sackhoff, I couldn't get my gun out of the holster. The holster was too small. And every time I was on set, I'd have to yank, yank, yank on the gun. And finally, they had to give me a new holster because literally the gun did not fit in the holster, which was <laughs> kind of embarrassing. But no, they do. They, and they're very careful. When I was on the set, I mean, when they have actually a live gun on set, they go through a whole safety protocol. The director comes out and literally like held up the gun to everybody and let everybody know, know there's only certain people that can touch this and they were very very careful you know like for me i had a gun but it had nothing in it there were no blanks no ammunition nothing in it i don't even think it had a clip in the bottom of the nine millimeter gun that i had but that's crazy so someone actually somehow loaded that gun and he got shot and killed that's what happened that yeah, sounds like murder. wow that is crazy that is craziness so now cummings you mentioned katie sackoff when, when did you become a fan of her Oh, dude, I, I I watched her on Battlestar Galactica, yeah. but I watched her on Longmire. And then yeah. I was like, wait a minute. And she's got another Netflix show that's really good. It's about space, too. I can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head, but my wife watches it. And I watch it with her sometimes. But uh, did you act, did you know that she's also on Disney Plus? Like, she's in The Mandalorian? I didn't know that. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that at all. So, no, I didn't know that. Hey, Angie. Yeah, she's hey, Angie. in The Mandalorian, too. Wow. No, she was when when I met when I was with her, and I think I've told this story a little bit before. I never mentioned her name, but in the movie I was in, I was a police officer, and I actually had a pretty good little part in this one. Unfortunately, this one were direct to video because right at the time we were filming, in the middle of the filming of this movie about a school shooting, there was a school shooting in Virginia, so that no one wanted to touch the movie, so it ended up going right to video. But the cast was Bart Johnson, who was the, uh, the the coach in High School Musical. I sat with him every day at lunch. Really cool guy. Awesome guy. Uh, his wife, that was Robin Lively, that was Blake Lively's sister, sat with her every day. She was absolutely beautiful. And they were funny. They were totally in love, like hugging, holding hands. I don't think I've ever seen a couple that was like so much in love as the two of them were together. It was really nice to see that. And then uh, Grant Harvey who was in The Secret Life of the American Teenager and was in, I think, one of the CSI shows. I can't remember which one he was in. Hey, AJ, AJF, thanks for coming in, brother. And then also, um, that's when Katie Sackhoff was in. So, yeah, I sat with her every day. She was beautiful, really funny, got kind of a good sense of humor, and uh, but also pretty serious about what she does. Like, when she was acting, you didn't bother her. But when she sat and had lunch with you, you know, super friendly, took pictures with all the cast members. One of the other officers that was there with me was a big um, – Battlestar Galactica fan, and she took like 10 pictures with him, and she was super nice, really down to earth. But yeah, definitely beautiful in person also. Very pretty. So that's cool that you, you got to talk to her. So let's see. Uh, Hitman, Tim, Timothy, I don't even know who that is. Timothy, Timothy Olympic. I'm not sure who that is. Hey, Stink Hi, Glenn. It's Glenn, right? Welcome to the show. Yeah. Glenn, I got to go in the other day into Glenn's show, and within a few minutes, we were talking about balls. Yeah. We had... Uh, but Father Brian was in there with Stinky Dad, and it, it, it digressed to balls very quickly. So we talked about balls and penises and things like that. So, oh, Joe, dude, Keanu Reeves, absolutely. I am definitely a Keanu Reeves fan. I loved him in Point Break. I loved him in The Matrix. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Absolutely. That was one. Hey, Slightly Serious. Welcome, Andrew. Slightly welcome. Welcome to the show. But – uh so, yeah, definitely that would be a person that I forgot. Now, who, who else are we forgetting? Give me some of the ladies. Wouldn't, the wouldn't Bridget Nielsen, wouldn't she be considered? Oh, what happened to her? Uh, she got she got fucked up with Flavor Flav. That's what happened to her. What happened to her? <laughs> I, what was that movie she was in? She was like the assassin. It was like, what was it? The Point of No Return, I think, right? Yeah, but she was in that other one, too. What was the name of that other movie that, that she was in that she uncrossed her legs? Like, that was epic for her. I can't remember which one that was. But I remember the – oh, Sharon Stone? Sharon Stone in uh, – what was it? With Arnold Schwarzenegger. Was that Total Recall? She was pretty awesome in that. She was just a knockout beautiful. And then when she threw the karate the karate stuff in, that was pretty amazing. Yeah, Basic Instinct. I remember that. She Uma pretty, Thurman, too. Uma Thurman, another good one. She was in uh, Pulp Fiction. And uh, that, that was literally the only movie I like Bruce Willis in. Are you guys like Die, Her Die Hard fans? I am. I'm not a huge fan of Die Hard. You like Die Hard? I, what, yeah. what am I missing about Die Hard? Why do I not like it? I don't know. It's just a, it was a movie when I was a kid, and it was just one of the first real like uh, one of those movies I saw, you know. And yeah, I, get, so, you know it is, I, I I always turn it off. I've got to sit down and make like a two hour commitment and just not get distracted and watch the movie. See, Tunnels is saying he doesn't like Die Hard. I've tried over and over again, and I just don't like it. Now, Spanky, let me ask you this question. I see your comment, and I agree with you. But now, if Die Hard is considered a Christmas movie. 
wouldn't Lethal Weapon also be a Christmas movie? Because Lethal Weapon was all based at Christmas time. Remember, the house was all decorated, playing Christmas music at the beginning when that, you know, when the stripper or the hooker, whatever she was, took the dive off, off, the, off the porch. Right? I mean, Lethal Weapon, if, if Die Hard's a Christmas movie, Lethal Weapon's going to be That's a movie else. I didn't I like. What's that? I didn't like Lethal Weapon. Really? So, okay, I forgot Mel Gibson. He was someone that I like. So, are you not a Mel Gibson fan or you just didn't like that movie? I just didn't like that movie. I mean, I, I there's not. I mean, Mel Gibson. I mean, it's just. I, I don't know. He's making. Uh, you heard what he's doing? What's he doing now? He's making Passion of the Christ too. Oh, dude! Oh. Did you see the first one? Yeah. Oh, that scene in Passion of the Christ. I mean, again, maybe it was realistic. I don't know. But that scene in Passion of the Christ, when he was getting, when Jesus was getting whipped, and you could literally see his ribs sticking out and everything, I almost walked out. I couldn't take it. It was that nasty. And I've Uh, seen every horror movie in the history of horror movies. And that was the one thing that got me, where I literally almost got sick watching that. Did you feel that way, or was I just being a baby? No, you 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 were you were cur- like that. I, I felt that way too because I mean it, it it legitimately is the most realistic, and I mean like I don't care how anybody feels. You can't deny the fact that Jesus was a historical figure, right? Like all the archaeologists mm-hmm. and you know people agree that Jesus existed, and so yeah, was he crucified? Yeah, he was crucified. Now after that, now you make up your own mind, but um. But yeah, man, the the Romans were were brutal. They were. Uh, that was just awful. That yeah. movie, I remember, I walked out of there and I was just literally just upset. I mean, I guess that was the purpose of the movie. We were supposed to be upset, and we were supposed to really understand, you know, what mm-hmm. happened. But you know, as far as, far as uh, Mel Gibson, I mean, I like a lot of his movies. Mel Gibson, you got Braveheart, you've got uh, what was the one about the Revolutionary War? I'm drawing a blank on the name. The of Patriot. That. The Patriot. I love the Patriot. With- Go ahead. Well, and I, I, I just pulled up a list of female action stars. I know at the very top of that list, no surprise, is Angelina Jolie because yeah. the, of like the Lara Croft Tomb Raider series. Um, but names on this list include Charlize Theron, oh, good Sigourney one. Weaver, you oh. know, from the Alien series, yeah. Linda Hamilton, because she was in the Terminator oh, series. She was amazing in Terminator. How can I not think of her? You're right. Yeah. Um, Scarlett Johansson's on the list, I've oh. noticed. Michelle okay. Rodriguez. Hold on, hold on, stop. Go back to Scarlett Johansson. She is my crush. She is the one. My wife has even given me permission that if Charlie, Charlie's, uh, I mean, that if uh, Scarlett Johansson walks up to my door, of course, this is going to happen. But when she walks up to my door and she rings the doorbell and says, oh, my God, it's John DeVito, the guy that was an extra <laughs> in five small movies and has a podcast with a very small following. I've always wanted you. When she does that, and I'm expecting it any day now, my wife's giving me the okay to go with her. So I had to stop. She is beautiful. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, well, God. If you've got Bridget that, Nielsen's you- on the list and Jennifer Garner, but but Jennifer Garner was mostly famous for the, the TV show Alias, where she played... You mentioned also Rodriguez. She was in like the Fast and the Furious and also Lost, right? Yeah, L- Lucy Liu is also on this list, but we knew her in the Charlie's Angels movies opposite like Drew Barrymore and uh, and who else? I find Lucy Liu very attractive. She's a beautiful woman, I think. I loved her in Allie McBeal. Um, Pam Greer's on the list. Um, Maggie Q. Um, trying to see who else. Um, <laughs> Cynthia Kahn. Did you see did you see the message down below? Dear John DeVito, this is Scarlett Johansson. I regret to inform you, I went to Mike from Tampa Bay's house instead of Boston. Oh, my God. I came back in sale. Well, I mean, you know, if you come up here to Massachusetts, you get the beautiful weather all winter, mm-hmm. you know, like 10 feet of snow. You know, I get it. Oh, you know, so you, your wife gave you that hall pass, but you know who, you know who, uh, you know, you, you know who mine is that I, I'm still trying to talk my wife into giving me this, but we haven't been married long enough. Right. You know who it is? Who? Shakira. Oh, Ooh. oh my God. After, <sighs> it was, was it the Super Bowl she performed in two years ago? Is oh, that yeah. Was? I'll tell you one thing. I didn't even see Jennifer Lopez. That performance yeah, that she put on literally had me in a trance. <laughs> you know, you know what people haven't realized though? That performance was the performance that we shut down the world on. Really? Yeah, that was it. Really? Oh. After, after that performance, there was nothing else. Like that was the end of the world performance. 
Wow. Yep. That's after cool. they did that Super Bowl show, there was nothing else. There was no, there was no, uh, there was no WrestleMania. There was no, there was no Lollapalooza. There was no uh, whatever that Bonnaroo. There was no other festival. Nothing in 2020. That was it. That was the fe- that was the one we shut the world down on. Wow, that's crazy. Hey, Tunnels, I'm sorry I didn't get to you, but you had called in and I didn't get to you. I apologize. We just had to talk. You guys jump in. We get a bunch of people that talk like crazy on here. But now, I got to tell you now, for, for the ladies that are in here, if there are any left, for any of the men out there that maybe like men, my wife's uh, hall pass is Ryan Reynolds. So, I, you know, honestly, if Ryan Reynolds shows up today and rings the doorbell, I think I will just put my tail between my legs and be just like, all right, go ahead. Have fun. <laughs> so I've given her that yeah. hall pass. So I get Scarlett Johansson yes. and she gets Ryan Reynolds. So <laughs> um, she- and another female action star that made that list is Mila Djokovic. Um, I loved her in the fifth element, which Bruce Willis and Chris Tucker were also in that movie. Right, right. She, I remember her. She was good also. I mean, there's, there's a lot of good female action stars. And I think more, finally, with this younger generation of actresses coming up, you have more and more female action stars that are really good. You know what movie I really like? Did you guys ever see um, Disturbia with, uh, what's his name? Chia LaBeouf. I don't even know how to say his name. Chia LaBeouf. Chia LaBeouf. And then the female that was in that, the, the woman is married, I think, to Chad Michael Murray, Sarah Romer. I liked her in that movie. Oh. She was very attractive and Kind of a, a voice yeah. hey, a real Patriots voice. Welcome to the show, Victor. Welcome to the show, <sighs> Chris Helmsworth. Yeah, <laughs> the, Angie, have you seen the remake of Vacation with Chris Helmsworth in it? He is absolutely 100%. You have to watch it, it's absolutely hysterical. The new Vacation. The remake of it was just nasty. It was dirty. The guy from The Hangover was in it. Ed Helms was the father. Christina Applegate was the mother. It was absolutely dirty but hysterical. Chris Helmsworth has, I think, the funniest part in the whole thing where there's literally one point where like, he's totally hitting on Christina Applegate, even though she's his sister-in-law. He, uh, Ed Helms and Christina Applegate are sleeping at their house in Texas. And, Ed, and uh, you know, he, he walks in. And he's got like this fake penis in his pants. And he's got no shirt on, absolutely jacked. And he walks in and he's, and, you know, Christina Applegate's Thank obviously you. looking at the giant penis he has in his pants. But he's like showing him how to work, work the remote control. And you have to see it. And he's, you know, he walks out of the room finally with this giant penis, you know, hanging out of his pants. And then Ed Helm looking goes, oh, my God, he totally came in just to show off his abs. <laughs> you have to see it. It was so freaking funny. What's that new movie yeah. they got on Netflix where the dude's got like the giant dick hanging out and the women were freaking out about it on tiktok Ooh, i didn't see that i haven't seen that yet well, yeah, it might have been me it might have been me because no, you know, it, that's, that's no. how i roll <laughs> no the guy wasn't bald he was bald no he wasn't bald oh so it wasn't me no well, you know, they probably would have cast me in that but i'm too big so you know how that goes all right maybe not my, my wife's probably <laughs> listening to the show work right now going sure you are sure dude you, you can't multiply it by three and, and call that the truth you know <laughs> That's my oh boy we well, like, like like every man every man whether you're talking about your penis or you're talking about the size of the fish that you just caught. You always add a couple of inches, right? I mean, you always, you know, figure that women can't add. You know, I have a wife that's got her PhD, and I exaggerate on my penis size. I'm sure she hasn't figured out yet that John tells me it's this big. You know, I I don't know if that's accurate. You know, you, <laughs> I think she probably figured out that I'm lying. But she's you know, I seen something the other day that said that nine. And here we go. Here we fucking go. But nine. It, it said that ninety eight percent of men on planet Earth have six inches, and that's it. Huh. See, now, when you say that, that must mean you have more than six inches. Is that what you're telling me? Well, I'm just saying. I mean, it doesn't – I mean, I, I listen, <laughs> my wife – let me tell you what my – let me tell you what I told my wife. This uh, this guy, me and my buddies, you know, we all kid around, and they're like, oh, your wife's going to leave you and all this stuff. You know, we all tell each other those jokes, yeah. right? And I'm like, well, good. You could fucking have her. The shit's going to have to be overhauled. <laughs> <laughs> and it'd be like rolling a bowling ball down the Grand Canyon. Yeah, for the next guy, it's going to be like throwing a hot dog down a hallway, right? Is yeah, that what that's what I was telling him. But, they, you know, we make jokes and stuff about that. But, you know, it, it just – Ew. Men have to be – oh, yeah, I love that sound effect, by the way. <laughs> the, the the, one. Men have to be so – have to be so, you know, uptight about that. I don't understand that. Like uh, it's just like yeah, you, you, you can't help it. It's not like you can go out and get a dick job like girls get a boob job. 
No, I don't. Well, you, you know what I do? I, I'm going to be really honest with everybody in here right now. This is the honest to God truth. I definitely exaggerate by two inches. I figure I have the two inch rule. So I exaggerate by two inches. So when I tell my wife that I'm actually eight inches, <laughs> you know, I, I'm exaggerating. I guess down from 10 inches. So, you know, I, I don't want to scare her with the full 10. So I tell her I'm eight. Okay. Well, maybe not, maybe not. All right. That's, that's if I attach something to it, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how we got here. How did we get this conversation? How the fuck did we just get here? This is not on my list. I've got this piece of paper of all these things I was going to talk about. And now we're talking about dick size. I, I didn't intend to go here. Not so for, I don't know. But I don't know. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, Cubella, if you put John's first name together with Cummings' last name, you get John Jeremy. <laughs> That's a good name. Does anyone remember Ron Jeremy? That's going way back in porn. He was one of the big stars in porn back in the day. So John Jeremy, that's a good name. Let's see. So Doss, get a measure asshole to peel. <laughs> oh, my God. This show's gone south in a hurry, man. But I, I, you know, it's funny. I'm still thinking about Chris Helmsworth now. You know, as I, I know I've got some friends in here, Eric and others that, you know, are gay and they, they say that they're gay. I'm, try, I'm trying to think now. I'm not gay. And I wish I was because if I could find a man that had a double extra large size uh, in clothes, I'd double my wardrobe right away, which would be a definite plus. I wouldn't have to deal with as much drama if I was gay. But I'm trying to think if I were gay, who would be the man that I would choose to go with? I mean, Ryan Reynolds, I can see the attraction there. Chris Helmsworth, I don't know. Um, I think I'd be shooting for the moon going for him. He's pretty hot. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know who I'd go for if I was gay. I mean, I'm, uh, maybe Eric Kirk. Eric, what do you think? Would you go with me if I was gay? Um, depends. Oh, that's a no. Did you? I got shot down politely. <laughs> Just like that. Oh my god. I'm not your type. Too old. Too bald. Um, I have other people in mind, but oh, all, right. Just... all right, all right. It's I, I handle I handle rejection well. When I was in my twenties. I went to Newport, Rhode Island with a group of people and a group of friends had a great time. And you know, I was Mr. Big football player then. And you know, whatever the, one, one of the guys that was there was super quiet. And one of the girls, we, it was mostly girls. It was like one other guy and me. So one of the girls came up to me in Newport. I didn't know who this kid was. And she goes, listen, uh, Chad is gay. And he's kind of concerned that you're not going to receive that. Well, are you okay with it? And I said, of course, just tell him to be himself. I could care less. It doesn't matter to me. So Chad and I actually hung out the whole weekend, had a good time. He was a great guy. And one night we all went out to bars. So thanks, no pro. So we all went out to bars that night. We went to like a you know a bar and he went to a gay bar. So later in the night, we ended up leaving the bar we were at and we went over to pick up Chad. So this was my first time going to a gay bar. I had never been to one before. And I went in and at the time, you know, six four, in good shape. I had a full head of hair. I was a young, strapping young man. And I walked into this bar and man, for the first time in my life, I knew what it felt like to be a woman at like a nightclub where you walk in and they're like men just like go after you. I had like a bunch of men just coming up to me, asking to buy me a drink, asking me to dance. And I've got to say a few of the men that came up to me were pretty unattractive. And I was a little hurt that they thought that they can actually get me at that point. So I did have my experience in a gay bar. It was kind of funny. The women I was with were kind of with me and they're like, they were telling the guys, Oh, he's not gay. He's not gay. And again, how would they know? I'm in a gay bar. So you, it's not on them. It's on me. But it, it was funny. The, the next day I remember, in the morning, Chad ended up meeting some guy and took him home, whatever. So the next morning, we're walking around Newport, and Chad puts his arm around me and goes, hey, John, how you doing? He goes, I heard you had a rough night last night. You came into the gay bar, and apparently you were fairly popular. You didn't know what to do. So he's like, what we're going to do today is we're going to go out and we're going to do some man things. We're going to change the oil in your car. We're going to rotate your tires. <laughs> <laughs> he was super funny about it. He was a great guy. And you know, I'm so glad that on that weekend, someone – because I guess I was a scary looking guy and he, I guess he didn't know how I would respond, but he was a great guy and it was just funny. And, you know, when, when, when the group asked me, do you want to go to the gay bar to pick him up? I'm like, sure, why not? I've never been in a gay bar before. What the fuck? It was different than I expected, but yeah, it was cool. They were good people. When, when people realized that wasn't gay, they weren't assholes. You know, they were, they were cool about it, but um, I don't know. So anyway, if, if I was gay, I still don't know who it would be. Probably Ryan Reynolds. So if Ryan Reynolds shows up at our house, I know I may be fighting my wife for him. If he comes. Oh my I God. I don't know. We'll leave it up you to want him. to hear the story about the time we went to the biker bar? Absolutely. We went to a biker bar one time. We were like, I was 20. I was underage, but they didn't ID because it was a biker bar, right? And so my buddy just turned 21. I was like days from turning 21. We go into this bar. It's 100%, it's 100% true story. 
we walked into this bar and my buddy's like an alcoholic and like everybody every one of my friends was an alcoholic and i was the only one that i didn't drink and right. that, so they're all slamming them back and they're drunk and i'm like you know this is before we even get they're drunk when we get there like that's how wild they were we were they were drunk before we even got to the bar so we get to the bar and i got this one buddy that's crazy I mean, he's just crazy. And this is Bobbert for anybody who wants to know. He sits there and he goes, like, this guy, five seven, 130 pounds, he sits there and he goes, I'm going to do it. I was like, don't you fucking do it. And I'm sitting there and I'm trying to talk him out of it. And he's sitting there and he's looking at me. He's like, I'm going to do it. I was like, you fucking do it. We're going to get the shit beat out of us. And so he walks up to the bartender, calls the bartender over, and it's like this old lady that talks like this. You know, she talks like the Simpsons lady. Yeah. And she goes, what can I do for you, sweetie? And he sits there and he goes, hey, honey, come here. I got to tell you something. She's like, what? And she goes, he goes, you got a bunch of gays in this bar. Oh, no. And when oh, she did, God. they beat the fuck out of us. Getting, We barely made it out of that bitch alive. No way. Was, yes. Yes, dude. Like yeah. this like this big dude is standing there with like patches and shit on him and like muscles right. and looking like Paul Tuttle from fucking Orange County Choppers <laughs> standing there. And he's like, standing there, like handlebar mustache and all. And he goes, but he didn't say gays. He said, uh, you know, he said the F word. Oh, yeah, the F word, but, the terrible <laughs> word. Yeah. Wow. But he goes, you got a bunch of F words in this bar. Oh, and she God. sits there and she goes, what did you say? He goes, you got a bunch of homos in this motherfucker. Like that guy's over there flaming. Did he and, really say that? Yes, dude. Oh. Like he did it as a joke because he didn't think that, you know, they do it. Dude, Dude, not a funny joke. You're about to get your ass beat. <laughs> you know? Holy shit. That is funny. No, th- that was one of the things. Like when I said I went into the gay bar, that was one of the things I didn't expect. I kind of expected. I, I guess I had a certain expectation in my mind as to what a gay bar would be like. You know, people in colored shirts and whatever. But that there were a lot of like bikers and guys like that in there, which I didn't expect. And I remember the first thing I saw when I went into the gay bar that I went into, there were two like bikers, big guys with fucking big beards and, you know, whatever their leathers on or whatever else. And they were slow dancing, like grabbing each other's asses while they were dancing. And I was like, when I walked in, that was one of the first things I saw. And I was like, holy shit, I didn't expect that coming in. That was not at all what my mental picture of the gay bar had been. So, but honestly, we hung out for, I don't know, a couple of hours, had a good time, had a blast, you know, it was all good. And I was appreciative that everyone kind of welcomed me in and, you know, didn't uh, kick my ass on the way out. But, you know, we have a lot of biker bars up here in New England, New Hampshire, Maine, Vermont, because we have a big Harley contingent up in that area. And I've been into a few biker bars, a few biker parties. One of my friends up in New Hampshire used to have this huge summer pig roast where all the Harley guys would come to his party. And you know what they would do? Because he lived in a neighborhood the neighbors got pissed off when all the Harley guys would be spinning their tires in the street. So they brought in like this giant wooden platform and they put it in their front yard and all the Harleys would go out on this wooden platform and they'd spin their tires, smoke them up in the yard. The whole neighborhood's full of smoke, but I'll never forget. I don't know how this happened, but one of the bikers was spinning his tires, lighting up the tires, smoke everywhere. And the giant wooden plank flew out from underneath his bike and hit like three people. It came flying up from under his bike and nailed a few people. But I'll tell you, if you've never been to like a Harley party or a biker party, those people know how to friggin' party, man. They go all out. They drink and they have a good time. And they're always, from what I've seen anyway, pretty welcoming to letting new people come in and you know, kind of hang with them. So, boy, I'll tell you, I intended today to be a show about talking about not being afraid, and we've gone in kind of a different direction. So when I publish this, I'm going to have to change the name of the actual show. But uh, I'm having a blast. I don't know about you guys. I'm having a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. I got a oh, question. Yeah. yeah. Do you like The Sopranos? Oh, my God. Absolutely. I love are The Sopranos. Are you going to watch The Many Saints of Newark? Hell, yes. Can't wait for oh, that. Oh, my God. Yeah, I can't wait. And that's pretty amazing that Gandolfini's son – is going to play young Tony Soprano. Oh, right? dude, I love the Sopranos. Like I, I like that was mine and my grandpa's show. Like people Rich. like, Oh dude, I love mob movies. Like Godfather. My wife hates it. Like, because when I'm at home and I'm by myself and it's just like, you know, she's coming home from going somewhere and doing something. It sounds like a fucking war zone up here because I got the, you know, the TV <laughs> on and Chico, it's, welcome. Either, it's either uh Goodfellas or, godfather or i'm watching the sopranos or or i'm watching uh i'm watching a western movie or i'm watching long how about, how about bronx tale oh my god 
that is one of my favorites with Chaz Palminteri. And uh, I mean, that was a great, great movie. De Niro. I mean, that I don't know if everybody's seen that. But if you haven't seen Bronx Tale, if you like movies like Goodfellas and those type of movies, Bronx Tale is one of my favorites. That's just an amazing movie. I love mom movies. Eric, are you into those movies or no? Because I don't think you're a big movie guy, right, Eric? Um, I don't really go to movie theaters like I used to. Um, like the nine-year period, I didn't even go to a movie theater watching the sixth film in the Harry Potter series to the second film in the in that um, prequel series to Harry Potter um, Fantastic Beasts. Right. Well, you know, but, I'm, worried, I'm worried about movie theaters because it looks like a lot of them are starting to shut down. And I'm concerned because if all the movie theaters start to shut down, I mean, I'm going to have no place to masturbate. So I'm kind of confused and just upset that I see a lot of these places shutting down right now because that's going to affect my personal time. You know? Oh, my God. No? Is that wrong? Oh <laughs> Should I not say that? Just... No, all right, Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> hey, I, I got I to gotta, I, I gotta run Pee Wee DeVito. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed it. Before you go, remember – now, remember, I'm sure you've seen The Hangover. I'll never forget uh, – what's his name? The guy with the beard. What was his name in The Hangover? Zach Galifianakis. But yeah, I what's his name in the movie, though? I, I don't remember. I can't remember. But remember Zach Galifianakis um, talking about uh, masturbating on an airplane. And then uh, you know Bradley Cooper's character is like, well, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. He's, yeah, well, ever since Obama came into office, thanks, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're probably going to try to do a show later on today or this weekend, Jeremy. Yeah, it's gonna be later on today. I'm gonna right. I'm gonna do it later on today. What time are you gonna be on? I'm gonna try. I haven't been in your show for a while. Hey, uh, do, do you wanna? You texted me something. Do you wanna mention that, or are you, you are you kind of still working on that? I don't know if you've made that. Oh, point. Uh, Trump. I yeah. mean, I don't care to talk about it. I mean, Trump's gonna be in Coleman, Alabama, August the 21st. I'm gonna be in Coleman, Alabama, the August the 21st. <laughs> I, I think mean, Dennis Lee and Donald Wayne said something about about trying to make the trip from Georgia over there too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna, well, you, I'm I mean, gonna be there. You've been, you've been after him for a while to get him, get him on your show, right? I mean, that'd be amazing if you got him. Oh yes, that's been the one. That's been the great white buffalo I've been chasing. You know what though? You've been doing the right thing. You're going after him, and sometimes that's all it takes is just going after him and asking. And he seems like he's the type of guy that he, you know, he would probably look at your show and say, "What the fuck? This guy's a supporter. Let's get on and talk to his people." And oh man, if you got him and, that and the cool. impressive resume of guests that Jeremy's had on his show, right? That'd be great to have. I mean, that would be amazing. To have I Trump mean, on. good lord, dude! Could you imagine though? Could you imagine the stuff we're going to talk about? Oh, I know that'd be incredible. So nice. well, I hope I hope it happens for you. And I know you said you had to go. I just wanted to ask you about that. So make sure you all keep us in the loop and let us know uh, if and when that happens. And I guess I'm going to have to do another show now titled "Don't Be Afraid" since I didn't get to that today. Where that was supposed to be full <laughs> theme of my show. That's all right. Though. We had fun, so who gives a shit, right? That's all. Yeah, about. That, hey, that could be an extra you might record over the weekend. Now, if, hold on, I'm seeing. I, I see Elgato. Is he banned again? I see he's one of my live listeners. Right um, now. I was banned um, again. Um, I think that might – let me see if that's a um, – it, it's really him. I mean, he's just changing up his name to um, look like uh, like he, like he's been, been trolling. But, I mean, we had a troll come in um, old man's show this morning, like, you know, stealing, like, Foot Fetish's um, logo and, you know, and, and using, like, vile language in his um, profile name that we can't even repeat. Wow. Hey, Q Bella, I see your picture down there. My listeners also, I saw your TikTok last night with your daughter or today it was or whatever. That was pretty funny. So I enjoyed that. And I saw you doing that TikTok. Of course, I was half asleep when I was watching it last night. But I, I saw the question from Baram U. I can't even say his fucking podcasting name still. Baram U. Baram U podcast. U. Is it U or U? Baram U. That's how we pronounce it. All right. So he, he was asking, do you guys know what's happening in Alberta? I heard earlier today that they have lifted all lockdown restrictions and deemed this a scamdemic. Is that true? Yeah. Heard yeah. That? Tell us Sounds about like it. it. Yeah, they went to court and they couldn't provide one. They couldn't provide one shred of evidence for COVID nineteen. Wow. You know, I mean, for me, I, I don't know what to think right now. I mean, as I've told all of you, you know, I got the vaccine. My children got the vaccine. And, of course, I lost my fucking vaccine card, so I can't find it now. So I have no proof that I actually even got it. But, you know, I think that if you do not want the vaccine, you should not get the vaccine. I made a choice based on my family. I knew the risks. We decided to do it. If you don't want to get it, you shouldn't get the damn thing. You shouldn't be forced to do it. No one should be coming door to door. No one should be forcing you to get the yeah. vaccine. But you're right. I mean, the, th the thing that, that I keep coming back to. 
that I can't understand how it happened, and I don't think it can be explained, is, okay, we had COVID last year. A lot of people died. But how could the flu, for the first time in history, completely disappear from the planet? I mean, it can't. We don't have a cure for the flu. The flu just doesn't go away. And the flu last year was gone during the COVID well, epidemic. John, did you not see about that? No, I didn't see. Well, I've been, I've been kind of off the news and not really plugged into things. So tell me what you know, if you know something. Yeah, the, the PCR test that they've been using to, give co- to, to test for COVID-19, yeah. it, can't differenti- it can't differentiate or whatever the fuck. Uh, it can't tell the difference between the, uh, between the flu and COVID-19. It couldn't tell the difference. So a lot of people that tested positive, tested positive for the flu. Wow. Mm-hmm. See, I mean, that's the thing, you know, and now here we are again, you know, going into the fall and, you know, I get to say, I said this earlier in the show, my two youngest kids are very upset. I mean, my oldest son, Matt's going off to college, which is heartbreaking for us that he's actually leaving us. I can't believe my first baby is moving out of my house in like a month. But then my daughter does Tekka Academy. So she does online school. It doesn't affect her, but my youngest two have suffered mentally because of this pandemic and now they're being told they have to wear masks back to school again they got the vaccines they've done everything they were supposed to do and they're going to have to mask up again in september and honestly the two of them are like i I don't want to say devastated but they're really upset and i think we're going to see this nationally if these kids all have to go to school in masks again i mean what are we doing to our children i mean we're treating them like lab rats it just doesn't seem right to me you know oh anybody there did i lose you guys i'm still here okay yeah, so I don't know. It's just crazy to me. So let's see. I thought Victor said I thought Jeremy was going to say he was in Deliverable when he said he was in a movie, a Deliverance. <laughs> yeah, Deliverance. Let me tell you something. You hear fucking banjos in Alabama, you better take oh, off running. Fuck yeah! Anytime. That's ever since I saw that movie. That I, I hear a banjo, I'm fucking gone. My butt cheeks pucker up tighter than a friggin' snare drum, and I'm gone, man. I'm not dealing with any of that stuff. I hear the banjo music. I am history. And it was funny. I had never seen Deliverance. I had never seen it until. I don't even know. I was probably in my thirties. I literally, someone told me I had to see it. I was dating my wife, then girlfriend at the time. And I'm like, you know, my friend was telling me to get this movie. Let's go get this movie called deliverance. She had never heard of it before. So we bring it home. We watch it. And as the guy's playing the banjo and then as Ned Beatty is getting like raped in the woods and he's making him squeal like a pig in deliverance. I remember my, my girlfriend at the time, my now wife looks at me. She goes, what the fuck are you showing me? <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't know. I didn't know this happened in this movie. I had no idea. So, yeah, the banjo man. I hear a banjo. I'm done. I'm checking out. I'm gone. Yeah. I'm not going to help you. I'm going to push you and hopefully push you down so the banjo man gets a hold of you and I can make my escape because I'm not that fast. So that's oh, kind of weird. Let so. me tell you, there's people there's there's people out there that are really like that in the South too. That's scary. Well, I've heard yeah. a lot like West Virginia. You've got a lot of people like the mountain people in West Virginia. And uh, in the South, I imagine probably certain parts of Alabama and in different places. Well, you know, it's no better up here, though. When you go to, like, northern Maine or northern New Hampshire, like I always joke about, I went to the NASCAR race up in New Hampshire a couple years in a row, probably like five years ago now. And, you know, loud New Hampshire, they have na- the NASCAR races come in, and you've got like 100,000 fans that go to these races. And my joke has always been, you know, we had 100,000 fans, but only 93,000 teeth at these things because i mean every redneck in the northeast was at this fucking race <laughs> they were all there and uh it was it was pr- a pretty scary crowd honestly for the most part you know you want to hear something funny yeah people love people talk about how the south loves nascar and stuff i honestly know only three people that watch nascar i hate yeah. nascar you know have you ever been to a race in person yeah you know, I've, I can't watch it on TV. I find that extremely boring. Honestly, I, I enjoyed probably the first 50 laps. Then after that, I'm like, all right, the race can be over now. I mean, when you go stand down in one of the front rows, you know, on the aisleway, and you see them go by you at 200 and whatever miles an hour, it's pretty awesome. And when you see a couple of crashes, it's pretty awesome. But, yeah, for me, I think, like, after an hour, I'm like, all right, I'm kind of done now. I could go home now. <laughs> I was uh, tired of it. But, you know, it, it goes on for quite a while with uh, whatever laps. I think they run 300 laps or something up in New Hampshire. Sure. when they when they run their races up there yeah, I, I wouldn't say i'm a nascar fan but it was cool to see it check it off the bucket list you know that type of thing so, yeah well, hey, uh, eric uh, i'm gonna check out probably soon too because we're looking at about an hour uh eric do you want to list off some of the other shows that are coming up and the comings i hope well, um, right. let me go man i gotta i gotta run i gotta get, get some stuff done i gotta call that guy about going to miami all right love all you right. kid talk to you soon see all right you, eric, watch your letter before i know what's coming all right you know coming up on pod being live um at 2.11 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 11.11 a.m. Pacific Time, our good friend Poetic 
you know, is scheduled to do a show. So definitely be on the lookout for her. Um, the Frankie D show, he'll, he should be on around 3 p.m. Eastern time. Um, be on the lookout for the Cummings' Culture podcast around 6 or 7 p.m. Eastern time. The Swap Doesn't Lie at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, Chris Unplugs Club 19 around 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. I know me and Slightly Serious will, will be on with our TGIF free-for-all show, but also opposite us is Scooter and Spanky with the Beans and Weenie show. Um, the Old Man returns tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern time. Um, with his Friday night music show playing the music of Michael Jackson. Um, Laura or um, Crazy Town should be on later with a post-Club 19 music show. And then throughout the weekend, you'll have the, the It's Doomsday podcast as well as um, the Dude Sean show and you know Crazy Town doing her Saturday night show as usual. Um, and of course, be on lookout you know, ne- next week for Brian and Rebecca and Glenn and... Um, and Ralph William on weekday mornings around 7 or 8 a.m. Eastern time, the old man's podcast weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, and also, and hopefully we might be seeing more, more of you next week, John, along with Mike Tampa Bay Tuesday afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, and also be on lookout all next week for new episodes of, like I said, of beans and weenies and, um, you know, it's slightly serious and, and Cummings' culture and, um, and, and um, and ho- ho- hopefully we'll be starting to see more of Trice talk with Donald Wayne and Dennis Lee coming back soon. Um, they taking a break, huh? a little break for those guys. Yeah, you know, they 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 have t- taken kind of kind kind of a break, but they did a surprise show on Tuesday night, which which was good to be good right. that we got to see them. And oh, uh, Robert was really thrilled too. But definitely, you know, look out for Robert to come back with the Mister Clean show, and um, you know, and and other names like Chuck and Billy's Not Your Cup of Tea and Linga Longa and Milk Dog and. Um, My good yeah, and, well, and, ho- and hopefully we might start seeing some more po- pod being friends that have been on hiatus coming back soon. Like I know we would definitely be, be, be on- honored and thrilled to see new episodes of lyrical laxative coming back as well as oh. the almost everything podcast. And ho- hopefully, you know, the, the raw report might surprise us again very soon. That'd be good. That'd be good to see some of them come back, but, uh, hey, but hopefully a- they know that we're thinking about them. Well, it says I see from Q Bella also more coming from Talk Hard TCB as well. Oh yeah, they, they, oh they got some shows next week. Definitely look out for them. Her I and Q and titles. I get a good show. And hey, listen, I, I was playing the Jeopardy music. Let me play it again really quickly. Has anyone been watching Jeopardy like the last couple of weeks? Have you seen it? Are you a Jeopardy fan, Eric? They have. They have oh, yeah, I'm, uh, um, I've yeah, been I reading play. like um, where they're getting close to naming their new host. Well, they have a but new guy I, I think right. fans are really clamoring for like LeVar Burton, but but yeah, I think pretty- um, the the show's executive producer is said to be in negotiations to to be Trebek's successor, which I think a lot of Jeopardy fans may not be too happy about that. No. Because I think well, they would rather have LeVar Burton. Is- LeVar Burton Go is good. Well, they have a new guy that's the, the champion right now, and the new champion has won four hundred thousand dollars. He's won like thirteen oh, yeah. days in a row. This guy seems like he's unbeatable. He's like a human computer. He's amazing. So if you're a Jeopardy fan and you haven't tuned in, tune into the show probably tonight, I guess, if you have time, and watch this new champion. Yeah. He's a beast. I mean, he just knows the answer to every question. He's amazing. Yeah. And, well, uh, the in, in the Eastern season. time zone, um, Jeopardy is usually on either at 7 p.m. or 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, depending on like the TV market right. you live in, because it's usually in the same hour with 30. Wheel of Fortune. Right. Yeah, up here they have Wheel of Fortune at 7 and then Jeopardy at 7.30. But yeah, if you haven't been on, Same check out the new champion. Hey, welcome to the two new people coming in. We're just wrapping up. I Hopefully you come back again sometime soon. So please, uh, <laughs> if you could, give me a follow. And I'm going to maybe be on over the yeah. weekend, maybe once. And then next week I'll try to do two to three shows. I'm going to slowly yeah. hopefully get back into it a little bit. So, hey, listen, for everybody that came in, I love you all. Eric, thank you as always for joining me, buddy. I love, love you. God bless you, everybody, and have a great right. weekend. Take care, everyone. Talk to you soon. All right. See you next time, everybody. Take care, everybody. Love you.